Hi, welcome to the Caucus for Women in Statistics 50th Anniversary Presidential Interview Series. As part of our celebration of 50 years in 2021, we're interviewing our past presidents. This interview is of Marcia Seol, 2008 to 2009 president, and is conducted by Rachel Furr. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm delighted to be here with Marcia Seol, who was a president for Caucus for Women in Statistics. We are doing recordings to celebrate the 50th anniversary for a uh, caucus uh, for women in statistics. Uh, so, uh, Marcia, before we start, uh, you know, asking the questions, could you give a brief, uh, brief introduction of yourself? Um, I'm Marcia Sio. I am a biostatistician. I work at the University of Washington in the rehab medicine department. Um, soon maybe to retire, <laughs> but um, I was introduced to the caucus in 1989 and uh, have been part of it since. Ah, thank you. Uh, so Marcia, the first section of the questions I'm going to ask you is about your experience as president. So. As far as I know, you were president for two terms. Could you tell us, you know, what are the most pressing issue of uh, CWS when you were president? Um, I think it was a very challenging time. Um, I was, I became president for two terms because we had a president that resigned and I was the president elect. So I took up, finished that term and finish my own term. At the time, I th uh, one of the most pressing issues for the organization was really lack of participation. And uh, the membership was way down. I mean, really way down, almost nothing. Uh, in 2009, I believe, um, in our meeting, you know, we had 50 people in the meeting, but only we had only 18 people actually paying their dues at the time. So there was a this question of whether we should even continue with the organization or if it had fulfilled its uh, mission. And at the, and finally we decided that we were going to continue, and um, that sort of spurred up a little more. Uh, um, interest and and then with the years with the newer presidents coming up after um, we saw increase again in membership and participation that was i think the hardest part of all because the few people who are part of the organization were doing everything and we we couldn't share it so we had to at the time we still have the the races that we used to do in the G during the JSM to organize uh, the Cox race. So um, it was difficult because we didn't have too many people participating at the time. So that was the most challenging part of it. Uh, yes, so that was indeed a challenging uh, time. So thanks, you know, for your work and you know others work you know we were able to uh, survive that challenging period of time so you know we are able to celebrate the 50th anniversary next year exactly. so you know for my next question uh what was your favorite memory about uh cws my favorite memory uh it it was really when we got together during jsm uh, meetings, you know, um, when we got together and got to talk to each other. Um, remember also when I first started, even though internet was something beginning, we would never have a Zoom meeting. You know, it was all phone calls and they were expensive too. So if somebody, nobody had uh, the means to get a conference call going it would take you know a long time to communicate with each other so when we were in person those were the most fun times and that's when you learned a lot from each other more uh, nowadays i feel like it's not as crucial in some ways but 
at the time, that was the most important part for me to get together. Yeah, yeah, that's very nice. And then, you know, who do you remember most in the CWS executive <laughs> And who do you remember <laughs> most in yeah, CWS well, <laughs> Well, some people that Sherry shared um, a lot of the, the hard times, like uh, uh, Tina Katsonis, you know, she helped me a lot. Um, other were people who were, had been officers or even had helped to initiate the organization, like Elizabeth Margosius or uh, Mary Gray. Um, I probably am forgetting some other people that are that I really like to always meet, but those people had a lot of influence on, you know, on my thoughts, on what I did or uh, towards the organization, for example. And uh, in two words, can you describe how you feel about CWS? Two words. Yeah. I have to two admit, words. I didn't think much about that because I find two words so hard, you know. Um, challenging and hmm, I should say the two words should be worth it because that's two okay. words. <laughs> so he said I, I was going to say that it's challenging to work there but also imp or important. You can choose challenging and important or worth it. <laughs> And, you know, I guess indeed, I think both sets of words, you know, you know, well, you know, also, you know, describe, you know, you know, the, the current situations is, you know, they are, you know, important. Okay. And, you know, we could see the CWS today. Um, so, okay, thank you for answering my questions. So my next set of the questions is going to relate it about your career path. Uh, you know, to see whether you know you could tell us more you know to tell us uh, to answer some questions about your career path the first question is how did you end up becoming a statistician <laughs> i always like to joke that it was by chance uh, because <laughs> um the, the story is like this in brazil where i'm from uh, to get to the university, you have to take an exam. And when you, so you don't just apply, you, you have to take an exam, they rank everybody and, and you, you make choices. You have several options, maybe three or four options for your first preferred major, the second preferred major and so on. And at the time, um, they, a, I really didn't know much about what I want to do. I was the first one in my family to go to a university. So my parents couldn't help much. So I, I knew I wanted something that was mathematically related. And after taking a one year, after high school, I did a one year preparation for the exams because it, it covers everything you learned before. In that process, I first thought I would go for computer science. And for a reason that until today I can't remember, I put a statistics as second option. When the time came for it, it, computer science was starting at the time, but everybody, it was very thought out, sought out. So it, people, are, uh, I had a lot of competition. So by the time they got in the ranking, with my name in the X, you know, with the XM grading for my name, there was no more spaces for computer science. So they put me in the second option, the statistics. And my intention was I'll do the first year basic courses in the university because it involves calculus and things like that, that, you know, are also for computer science. And then I was asked to transfer and I start liking it and decide to stay. So I finished my um, bachelor's in statistics, was supposed to be to have a job from an internship I had done in um, a cooperative um, agriculture co cooperative in the south of Brazil. And in the last minute, they took the job away. Uh -huh. And uh, for two reasons. I learned from another 
friend that was an intern with me, he was an economist, an intern with me, he got a job. And he told me that I didn't get the job because first I was a woman and I, was, I would be the only woman in the group. Second, because I was a statistician and they were all economists and they said, if a statistician comes here, what are we going to do? So I, because I've lost my, the opportunity of a job in the last minute, I started taking some course, graduate courses, ended up doing a master's degree in Brazil, got a job in a university in, uh, in Brazil, in the south of Brazil. Then after two years, I told my former advisor, I would like to do statistics, you know, go for a PhD, but I wanna work in something related to health. And at the time, again, we didn't have internet. So, you know, the information was dif difficult to come by. And this professor of mine who had got his PhD in Iowa State said, um, there is a professor, Breslow, who works in this area in Seattle. I said, okay, that's where I'm going. And that's what I did. Uh, I knew absolutely nothing. That was the information I had about the university and or the course. I applied, was accepted in, here in Seattle, um, finished my course, um, and I stayed because I met my husband. I married, and then I got a job at the University of Washington. So I guess that's my <laughs> long career path. <laughs> Well, you know, that's a very fascinating career path. <laughs> you, know, we, you know, with a few twists, but you know, you are here. Yeah. It, and in the process, I have to say, the more I did work in the statistics and by statistics, the more I, you know, I love the job that I uh, did and still do. I, I really enjoy it. And now I can have, take back to Brazil from time to time I go there and teach. And I usually teach in the health sciences area, not for biostatisticians because they have their own courses, but I work a lot with nurses in the nursing schools in Brazil, uh, several of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, so um, what challenges do you think female statisticians are facing today? Maybe too much data. <laughs> this sounds funny, but uh, um, the the problem I f I feel, uh, especially in the health area, uh, the much the idea is not really that it's a challenge. It's a challenge for statisticians because a lot of people, um, you know, when I review papers from the medical area, they are they think they have the data and they start doing tests without enough knowledge. And, and I feel like not all the uh, people who do research in the health area especially, which is where I am, but have some availability of data, um, they do not include the statisticians in their groups. So therefore their analysis sometimes are pretty flawed and um, or their interpretation is, you know, sounds better than what it really is. So I, I feel like as a statistician, we are still not doing our work of working with them. I don't know if it's our fault or their fault <laughs> or I mean, lack of communication. Um, that is one big problem I see. The, it's, um, I am working with some people, uh, some physicians where, oh, we just go and get the data from Epic, which is the, you know, you know, the university, the hospital, and then we do some analysis and that's it. So there's very little um, statistical thinking on their uh, part. And I think that's a challenge because it's, it looks like is statistics is the culprit when it's the use of how we use a statistic that is really the problem. So that's one 
one challenge in the area I work uh, in. Yeah, exactly. I think you identify a common issues, like still common issues in statistics. I encounter similar problem, you know, in my work too, you know, really, you know, exactly the similar issue. Uh, so, but do you think any specific challenges that uh, female statisticians are facing today? You know, it's it's a uh, that's a difficult question for me because I am in a department that is incredibly diverse from from all points of view. It's becoming even more diverse from the demographic point of view. But as a um, and and I'm saying this because I felt in the past more discrimination for being by a statistician in a clinical department than by being a woman per se. Okay. Right? So it, it was more my, I mean, I uh, more defensiveness because I am a statistician to work with me because I'm a statistician than why, because I'm a, a woman. So yeah, I'll be very frank. I mean, I, I was never, uh, the one to you know step back because a, a man told me not to do something, so uh, I feel like uh, I don't I don't know that I had a lot of discrimination because of being a woman um, that I could identify easily, but um, it it's always a a, a difficult um, it's a challenge in any case to break you know barriers especially depending on what department or group of people you work with i think i am fortunate that i don't have too many barriers because of you know of that problem obviously when i first started my career like i said my first job as a statistician i lost because i was a woman <laughs> so this is still happens Uh, yes. So, you know, I think the situation has been improved over the years, but, you know, those issues still exist. Yeah. And uh, is there anything else you would like to share regarding? I'm afraid you froze. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I think she did freeze. <laughs> she froze right. once before and I continue to talk hoping that she'd come back she did come back but now she's not <laughs> yeah we'll see give All her right. a minute Oops. See if can she... you hear me I can Oh, oh it, there you are. Your You're back. was completely frozen. So maybe we have to redo that last question. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering yeah. too. Uh, but let's finish this. Okay. okay, so you want me to redo the question? Okay. Well, um, you ask if I want to add something more. I, I don't know. I don't think I have anything. Uh, of course, as soon as we finish, I will remember. But <laughs> I don't think I have anything to add. So you can ask the question again if you want. Uh, so here's the last question for you. Share regarding your career development. Can you repeat it? I didn't get the whole thing. Okay, so here's the last question for you. Anything you would like to share regarding your career development? Um, I think I think that more girls should be uh, encouraged to take um, um, more, you know, what we would say, more math, more quantitative, or uh, being a statisticians they should be encouraged uh, earlier in their lives. Um, when I first started, I didn't even know what statistics was 
We didn't have that in high school. Today we do. Uh, so they have a little better idea of what, you know, the path that they could follow. So I think we still need to encourage them to go in these areas and because we can do a great job. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Marcia. Has been a pleasure uh, talking to you. Thanks for your time and thanks for your insights. Thank you very much. Stop the recording.